I'm Renee Tucci, AIFD. I would like to thank Longwood Gardens for asking me to create for you today. I'm fortunate enough to get to teach at Longwood a few times a year for both credit and floral fun classes. I have been fully immersed in the floral industry for over 20 years now. I'm on the national education team for Teleflora, which takes me around the country where I get to lead florist to florist design demonstrations. I'm also a part of the continuing education department at Bucks County Community College, and I travel internationally to speak to garden clubs. I'm the incoming president for the Northeast region of the American Institute of Floral Designers, and this past March, I was a major exhibitor at the Philadelphia Flower Show, where my team and I produced the Princess Grace Rose Garden. Today, I've gathered some cuttings from some common garden plants, and I'm going to create a design for you that I hope inspires. So, I don't know about you, but I, I miss entertaining. I miss having friends over. And whenever I have friends over, I get my fancy picture out. This is how you know I'm having friends over. So, I thought, in, as an homage to that, and for all the beautiful spring flowers that are, that are in bud, I brought my picture out, and that's what we're going to use today as our vessel. Uh, now, I'm going to start creating this design with some rhododendron. My rhododendron is not in bloom yet, so I'm just strictly using it for its greenery, but I'm gonna leave it in my vase and watch it open on the table. Now I've carefully selected pieces of my, of my uh, bush that I pruned for this demonstration um, for some shorter pieces that have uh, laterals here, and they almost seem like fingers. And that's what's going to help us create a design where single stem flowers like tulips, where they normally might flop about, can feed through these uh, laterals and stand straight. So I'm going to take my rhododendron, I've actually already cut a few pieces here, and I'm going to add them into my vase. And when I do that, I'm actually going to tangle the pieces into the laterals of the other pieces that are already in the vase. And that's what's going to create the base of my design. And in technical terms, this is called lacing. So that's how I'm going to build the base of my design. I'm starting with my greenery and my big, luscious rhododendron greens. And now I've got a nice base, a connected base set inside there, a web, I like to call it, um, so I can start adding my flowers. Next up, I've got some gorgeous azalea. How beautiful is this? It actually looks faux. Uh, but as you can see, the branches are shorter and compact. Uh, so we need to just do a little bit of editing because we would like most of the stem that goes into the pitcher to be clear. So I've already edited a few branches down and I'm going to take those. As you can see, I've got much longer, uh, clearer branches here. And just before I came on camera, I gave them a fresh cut. So for speedy purposes and the magic of television, I'm gonna drop them right in here. So I've got all different sizes, some short, some long, and I'm going to let them just do their natural thing. I'm weaving them right into the rhododendron branches, right into the center. Everything's getting kind of caught up and tangled, and that's just how we like it. Next up, I've got some gorgeous lilac, as you can see here. Now, I've pre-cut this just before I came on camera, um, and I actually, once I, I cut it, and then I s split it a little bit right up the stem, and in doing that, you're going to assure a better uptake of water because we know that lilac is a really thirsty plant. So I'll take my lilac stems, and you can see by using these uh, flower varieties that how quickly my pitcher has just filled to the brim. I've also edited down the foliage on my lilac stems. So where you see a lot of these uh, side greeneries, I would cut those off, pluck those off, so that there's hardly any greens left on your lilac. That's going to encourage the water to go directly to the blooms, which is where we need it. My finishing touch on this garden pitcher design are just a few hellebore that I happen to have left over in my garden that I haven't pillaged for any other designs just yet. So I'm going to add these in just along the sides here. And over the next few days, whoop, 
Hopefully that one falling out here. Over the next few days, our hosta are going to get longer and longer. So if you have some really nice long hosta leaves, those would be a beautiful accent in the design as well. And what's the perfect complement to this beautiful picture design? How about, how about some antique teacups that have been filled with some glorious lily of the valley, which is popping up right now perfectly. A touch of the purple sage for a little bit of texture. It's all been designed completely in a flower frog, a mini flower frog, and just set right in the vase. So that's our teacup and pitcher design. For those of you that want something just a bit more challenging, I have just another pitcher to show you. Here's a more voluminous pitcher. And what started out like this, Hardy Ivy, was stripped and made into a vine armature. So I actually just stripped the stems completely of their foliage, bent it back on itself, and used some paper covered wire to hold that bend in place. I assembled a, several of those together, kind of fit them like a puzzle, and there you have your uh, armature in place on the pitcher. Next up, I'm just going to add to them some simple tulips. I've got some gorgeous fringe tulips here. I'm going to clean them, give them a fresh cut. Now, you know, tulips like to dance and grow. And so the armature is actually going to, is going to help everything stay right where we want it. So I've got about, I think, 15 stems of tulips here. And I've cleaned most of the foliage off of them already. But if you have any um, lower leaves, you'll want to take those off so that you've got some, a pretty clean stem that you're adding into your design here. And you'll see that I'm adding them in all throughout the armature. Some on the outside, some on the inside. And that's going to create a nice, round, radial style design. When you make a radial design, you want everything to look like it's radiating from the center. So as these tulips grow towards the light, they will dance among the armature, and they'll continue to hold their heads up. Sometimes that happens with tulips where their heads want to, to bow down. Well, this will help them stay in place. So I'm just going to add a few more in here. This also creates great rhythm in a design. So what started out as a simple picture really took on some life. My finishing touch on this design, your ornamental grasses might be starting to come up. So you might wanna just clip some of those and add, a, add those in in small clusters for another overarching touch, a whimsical finish and a little bit more rhythm for your tulips to dance around. So again, I'd like to thank Longwood Gardens for inviting me to create today. I'm thrilled to be a part of their online content. Thanks for watching.